We're going to focus on COVID-19, but let me just make a quick correction. Earlier, I said Kwame Owusu was former Director General of the Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority. Forgive me, he was for the Ghana Maritime Authority. Now, President Kufwado is urging Ghanaians to adhere to COVID-19 safety protocols to mitigate chances of a second wave. Now, he says, although the country has made significant success against the virus, people must observe the protocols. In his 18th address to the nation, the president said the country's recovery rate now stands at 98.5 percent. As of Friday, 16th October, the number of active cases has declined further to 398, with 46,664 persons fully recovered from the virus, putting our recovery rate at 98.5 percent. 13 more deaths have occurred bringing the total number of deaths tragically to 310 out of a total number of 510,074 persons tested. The rate of death, 0.5%, continues to remain very low. When you take a close look at the measures some other countries are having to take, including imposing nighttime curfews and partial lockdowns, declaring state of emergencies, limiting the numbers of people permitted at public gatherings, and mandatorily fining persons for not wearing masks, all in the bid to contain the second wave of the virus. We in Ghana have been spared all these developments and restrictions. We must thus be doing something right. In fact, our favorable situation at the moment is thanks to the effectiveness of government policies, the cooperation of you, the Ghanaian people, and ultimately to the grace of God. The science and data tells us that the trajectory of the virus in Ghana mirrors that of an epidemic with reduced disease activity. Our daily infection rates are no longer in the hundreds as they were some time back. Presently, they are in the tens, averaging 25 new cases per day in the course of last week. This, in spite of our successes, I'd like to reiterate that this virus remains something of a mystery and we should always rather err on the side of caution and continue to observe the protocols that have brought us to where we are. During his address, the president also reviewed some restrictions like the number of people who can attend conferences and seminars. He also announced the return of football games in two weeks, but uh, conspicuously missing was his mention of the positive cases confirmed in the Black Stars camp. We'll have uh, some analysis on that later when George Addo Jr. joins me later during the sports segment. But let's hear the president on this. The strategic, controlled, progressive, safe easing of restrictions continues with its overarching ob objective being to restore our lives and economy back to normal. Football, the passion of the nation, will return in two weeks. Private burials, still with a maximum of 100 persons, are being performed. And the limit on the numbers of persons who can attend conferences, workshops, and award events has been lifted, subject to the strict adherence of COVID-19 protocol. I'll be talking shortly to Dr. Amuesi on what this means for us uh, in terms of our recovery and death rates. Uh, do stay with us here on News Desk.
Thank you for staying on News Desk with me, Bernice Abubeidu Lansa. On Sunday, that's yesterday, the president delivered his 18th address to the nation after we first recorded COVID-19. And among others, he encouraged Ghanaians to continue adhering to safety protocols. He did talk about our recovery and death rates and mentioned that it was good the signs there were good but earlier i spoke to dr john amuisi who is a lecturer at the global health department school of public health at K knusd and leader global health and infectious diseases research group at the kumasi center for collaborative research he first answered the question on what our recovery and death rates really mean i think it's really important to put all these um things into perspective and I may begin to sound like a broken record because um, these are things that I've shared over and over again. Um, there is no doubt that uh, the picture is better than it used to be. I think this is without question. One may argue that how good the picture is may be difficult to determine, yet we can say with a, some amount of confidence that it is good. I, I say this because the, the arguments that perhaps um, our testing has gone low, which is very true nonetheless, um, would reduce our ability to, to detect cases is, is a valid argument because the less you are testing, the less you will see. But I've always maintained, and I see again, that when people fall sick, you can't hide that. And ultimately, when people um, die, you, you cannot hide that. So. Being able to say that our death rates have reduced considerably is absolutely what it is. Um, pointing out that our ICUs and other um, uh, hospital beds are not filling up is absolutely true. Being able to point out our rate of spread, however, is rather tricky because you will realize that um, while rate of spread may be increasing, it may not be directly correlated with the levels of severe disease and levels of death. One may argue that, well, uh, if people are not getting sick and people are not dying, then who cares? I mean, if the virus is already be there and we just, everything is hunky-dory. So um, if you look at it, at the, the spectrum as the ultimate outcomes, death, hospitalization, doing great, mm -hmm. spread of the disease, can't really, really tell. But by and large, things seem to be working well for Ghana. And this is not isolated to Ghana alone. In fact, things seem to be panning out much better for Africa. Mm. Doc, um, let me just make reference to a statement made by the president, if you indulge me. When you take a close look at the measures some other countries are having to take, including imposing nighttime curfews and partial lockdowns, declaring a state of emergencies, limiting the numbers of people permitted at public gatherings, and mandatory fining uh, for persons not wearing masks, all in a bid to contain a second wave of the virus. We in Ghana have been spared all these developments and restrictions. We must thus be doing something right. Doc, at the time in Europe and in America, when they were recording or experiencing their first wave, we had barely started recording numbers. Is it not premature to assume that we aren't experiencing a second wave, especially looking at the timelines within which they experienced the first wave and when we experienced ours? I, I will just read a little bit more of what the president said, because he said something really interesting beyond saying we must be doing something right. I, I quote, he said, in fact, our of you, the Ghanaian, and ultimately to the grace of God. Um, so, and then he went on further and said something, uh, in fact, he said he used the word, the virus remains a mystery. Mm. And it, it's very important to put, the, to, to take these, these, these words holistically, that we're doing something right, and then the additional statements that he made. Because uh, as, I, as I pointed out, the picture that we're seeing in Ghana is not isolated only to the country, but it's also being uh, seen or it's panning out across the entire Africa in the same way, which means that beyond doing something right, there's some intrinsic properties uh, of the continent that are allowing us to have a more favorable outcome. I'm not saying that we are not doing anything right, and I'm also not saying that we are doing well because of the right things that we have done. 
And this needs to be made very clear. And I think the president invariably said exactly the same thing. The question of a second wave is a very interesting one because uh, a second wave was seen in China, but it was a very attenuated second wave. The second wave has been seen in Europe and in North America. Now, we need, we need to understand the, the genesis of the second wave in, in Europe and in North America. You will realize that uh, things started to get better just before the summer break um, in, in, in the global north. And the Europeans and the, and, the, and the Americans took full advantage of this. We're going on their holidays, we're partying, we're doing everything like all is well. It is therefore not surprising at all that you see this massive rebound. And normally when the rebound starts, it starts very slowly and then it picks up momentum very quickly. Interestingly, they themselves warned of this and anticipated, but they were willing to take the gamble. They were not willing to sacrifice their holidays, not willing to sacrifice their lifestyle uh, for the sake of the virus. Mm. Look at China, on the other hand. Uh, China um, has, with the recent economic figures, recorded economic growth of over 4%, up to close to 5% over the last quarter. Completely different from the picture that we see in the U.S. economy and the economies of any other country for that matter, just about the only country in the world to re record significant economic growth. And it is the second largest economy in the world because of the very strict measures that we're taking. Now, that notwithstanding, from where we are here in Ghana or in Africa, it is plausible to suggest that we, we, we are, we are um, amenable to a second wave. This is possible. But this will largely depend on the kind of actions that we take. Let me start by talking about some of the things we've done in terms of easing um, the things. Uh, you can start with looking at um, how we, 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 we allowed weddings and funerals to, to go on. Um, many of us were concerned that these measures would lead to a rebound. We didn't see anything significant. Then we went on, have the hotels open, the bars and the nightclubs open, the churches opened up a bit more, the mosques opened up a bit more. Then we have the airport reopening, and we still did not see any significant change in our fortunes. Now we hear about football also coming back. Of course, with what we're seeing, it's very difficult to argue that football should not come back. But my question would always be, what is marginal uh, change in risk that is posed by the changes that we make. It may be more of an academic question, but still a very important question. How far can you push the limits? Is there a certain point beyond when you cross that everything just goes out of hand? So, well, we should continue what we're doing, the very cautious, stepwise approach, so that stepping back doesn't become too difficult. If you accelerate too fast, then stepping back becomes very difficult. You need to decelerate before stepping back. Mm -hmm. So I would really um, urge, I think just like the president did, a lot of caution in all our steps as we seek to ease things and make things better for people. Really keep on looking behind, uh, keep on doing it slowly rather than doing it quickly just mm -hmm. because things are looking good. All right. And and hopefully, as we as for themselves, that by the grace of God, things should be better. All right, Doc, is, is there any time frame that has been determined in terms of lifting restrictions and seeing the impact of those decisions in, 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 in studying the, the Europe and America's example? No, you, you, you ask a great question and I can tell you that uh, this has been studied deeply and it will not be till the first week in November when the first very comprehensive studies of the actual impact of lockdowns in various countries on the spread of the disease um, will be released. But I can tell you from work that uh, um, I, I did with, with very good colleagues um, here in Ghana um, at, at my center here at the KNUST, um, and, uh, and, it, it, and thankfully in collaboration with the Ghana Health Service who provided us with some of the data and information we needed, showing clearly how our reproductive number, the proverbial reproductive number, decreased sharply during the first two weeks of our lockdown and how it even went further when certain measures were put in place, how it actually went up a little bit, although not too significantly when we eased the restrictions. So it's very clear, these kinds of things work. But the question is when to do them, how long to do them for. Where we are right now is good. 
But what I was saying was that we need to keep our eyes on the ball so that if we need to step back, we can do so with minimal disruption. Mm. You spoke a bit about football. Let me just wrap up our conversation with that. The president announced that um, local football activities will resume in two weeks. Just over the weekend, Jordan Ayew announced that he had tested positive for COVID. And he apparently is the Sith player from the Black Stars who's, re who's recorded uh, positive for coronavirus. Shouldn't this have maybe um, made us pull our brakes a bit on allowing the resumption of football activities? No, I think it's a great question you're asking again. Um, but let me take you a bit further on what, what the reporter said. Um, Jordan himself mentioned that he was totally asymptomatic and was fine. So how do we know he tested positive for COVID? Well, how do we know he's COVID positive? Because he tested for it. And this is exactly my point, that if it wasn't that because of the nature of his work, he had to be tested, this would have gone totally undetected. He would have just been fine, playing his football, and all would have been all right. In the same way, one could argue, and this is why I pointed out earlier, that we can argue that our um, hospitalization rates and death rates are great, but the rate of spread is very difficult to put a finger on it because we are not really looking out for that. But again, one would say, who really cares? If there are no hospitalizations, people are not dying, it's fine that that virus be there. So um, using him testing positive alone as an index of risk is not accurate enough. It just tells you that this virus indeed spreads when people gather and make contact and spend time together. This is just these are the facts of the matter. And so this is why I would always recommend that while we are happy about our low hospitalization and low death rates, if we could set up some sentinel sites for researchers to keep on monitoring the spread of the disease, irrespective of its impact on hospitalization and death, this would I spoke earlier to Dr. Amwesi on the impact of COVID-19 and the figures we are currently uh, currently recording and what Ghana's case really is. You're watching News Desk with me, Benis Abubedulan. So coming up shortly, Daryl Kwao brings us business. This time we're focusing on the free trade agreement. Do stand by for details.